Welcome back to Long Covid Doctor, an educational series for sufferers of Long Covid. I'm Dr Tim Robinson, formerly a family doctor for 30 years, now a Long Covid specialist. This is the second part on skin problems and Long Covid. As always, my usual disclaimer, any advice, diagnoses, treatments that I mention should only be considered after discussion with your own doctor or medically qualified health professional. So here we go, part two on skin problems and long COVID. So in the first part, I talked about the skin conditions and that that can be occurring in long COVID patients, the conditions that they're telling us or the symptoms that are telling us about the various diagnoses and the underlying causes. And then I went on to... Um, explain how to manage those problems. Now, here in the second part, uh, we'll talk about the ways, the strategies that we should be considering in the management of long COVID in general. Firstly, a, a brief reminder about long COVID itself and its causes, as we understand them now. As we know, long COVID is the persistence of symptoms following a COVID infection. And some patients have now had this dreadful condition with all its vast array of symptoms for up to four years. And the underlying causes are a mixture of excessive inflammation, the cytokine storm we've all heard of, mast cell activation. I talked about this in the part one. Um, probably microclot formation, damaged immune system with or without autoantibodies attacking our own, our own tissues, all resulting in direct plus indirect tissue damage, also leading to dysautonomia, again I touched on this in the first part, plus also disruption of the gut microbiota, the friendly gut bacteria. That is so important for so many reasons. Um, support of the immune system, production of chemicals, neurotransmitters, hormones and vitamins, and the maintenance of a healthy intestinal gut lining, the gut wall, that is not leaky, but is, is strong, a strong barrier to the intestinal contents. And you've probably all heard about the possibility of viral persistence, you know, pockets of virus or, or, the, or the strands of the, of the COVID RNA or, the, or spike protein that keeps driving um, most, if not all, of these processes and hence making it a chronic long-term, long-term condition. So all in all, it's not good news and it's complicated. And being so diverse, diverse in its symptoms, it's not surprising that there is no one magic bullet solution to cure it all to deal with long COVID in one hit. And so what to do, what to do meanwhile. In order for natural healing to take place, we have to care for ourselves, our body, our internal systems, especially the healing systems, as best we can. We have to take a holistic well-being approach. Um, what is this? Well, broadly speaking, it comes under three main headings. So attendance to our nutrition, attendance to our sleep, and attendance to a, a sort of a mind-body balance. I'll explain each in turn. So firstly, nutrition, our diet. We should preferably have a mixed balanced diet, the Mediterranean diet that contains all the necessary minerals and vitamins, the building blocks of cellular tissue repair, as well as anti-inflammatory antioxidants, the polyphenols. The Mediterranean diet will also 
contain prebiotic fiber to nourish the microbiota, which I've just talked about, the friendly gut bacteria. Um, again, I cover this in uh, my talk on long COVID gut in great detail. So like I've said, healthy gut flora is so important for all those processes um, that I outlined. So prebiotic, prebiotic, I, um, prebiotic fiber, i.e. fiber that nourishes the friendly gut flora. Also in the diet, it's important to have um, a good supply of omega-3 um, uh, essential fatty acids. So basically oily fish. So oily fish is, is heavily, heavily um, uh, uh, resourced, resourced, no, wrong word. Um, there are a high degree of omega-3 essential fatty acids in oily fish. So your mackerel, your salmon, um, your sardines. Um, omega-3 is really important uh, for immune support. Again, obviously really important for long COVID because of the ill effects of COVID on our immune system. And finally, the only other thing that I mention when I'm in this sort of category of diet, I talk about um, vitamin D supplementation. Okay, so as we all know, vitamin D is uh, synthesized in our skin under the influence of sunlight, the, the sort of the sunlight oh, um, vitamin. Um, but obviously here we are in Northern Europe, in the Northern Hemisphere, where for a lot of the year, where there's a lot of darkness and the sun is usually pretty obscured with clouds. Um, and so we're relatively sun starved. And so we won't make as much vitamin D in our skin as we would do it, uh, if we lived um, south in the hotter climes. So supplementing with vitamin D, there's no harm in that at all. Um, and, you know, I thoroughly recommend it. A thousand international units a day. I take I take vitamin D on a daily basis um, during the winter months. I also take omega-3 um, uh, fatty acid uh, because, all right, I eat fish, lucky enough to eat fish a couple of times a week, usually, but belt and braces, I usually top up with some omega-3 fish oils, not only because of the immune support, but also um, for their anti-inflammatory effects, and they're also cardioprotective. So that's diet dealt with. Like I said, a mixed balanced diet, a Mediterranean diet, for all those, those components that a mixed balanced uh, a mixed balanced Mediterranean diet contains, plus also the prebiotic um, fiber to nourish your friendly bacteria, but also you know omega three fish oils are important as well as vitamin D. That's diet done. So secondly, sleep. Sleep, as we all know, or drummed into us in our youth, is the great healer we re get refreshed and we get repaired during sleep. So we must support our day-night cycle, the circadian rhythm, because the circadian rhythm determines the release of various restorative hormones. So growth hormone. Um, most, most of the growth hormone, which is a sort of repair hormone, is released at night. So you've got to have a a good circadian rhythm. You've got to have healthy sleep at night. Um, and so she, we should be thinking about um, sleep hygiene. So a strict bedtime, a strict time to get up in the morning, uh, go to bed with a sleep enhancing novel, say, not necessarily uh, relying on our mobiles or our tablet screens uh, as a way of of uh, getting off to sleep, certainly shouldn't be using those 
in the hour before going to sleep, before turning the light out, because um, screens emit blue light, uh, as opposed to, which is arousing, as opposed to, say, sort of pink or um, uh, pink light is, is yellows and pinks, and gold light is more calming. If you've got difficulty getting off to sleep, you can try Pyroton. So chlorphenamine, four milligrams. This is a first generation antihistamine, which you can buy across the counter um, in, in your local pharmacy uh, without a prescription. Uh, magnesium, there are studies to show that 500 milligrams of magnesium is quite good to enhance sleep. A lot of patients are buying melatonin three milligrams rapid onset over the counter, uh, no, online, um, as a way of, again, enhancing sleep and to try and sort of keep you asleep, stop stop sort of you waking up in the middle of the night uh, for the slow, with the, with this, by using the, the slow onset uh, melatonin preparations that you can buy. Melatonin is safe, tried and tested. There are studies to show it is safe and effective. Uh, and so, again, like I said, there are a lot of patients who are basically, because it's difficult to get from your GP, because it's so-called off-formulary or non-formulary, you have to be 55 and above to get it on as a prescription. And if you can persuade your GP to prescribe it for you, you'll only get a very short course of it. So there we are. And like I said, um, try and be strict. Get a routine with going to bed at a, at a, at a regular time, the same time every night, not too late. Um, so you have a routine. And that, like I said helps with the circadian rhythm, the day-night cycle. And like I said, you know, get an alarm clock for the, the, the getting up in the morning. No more l lazy lions, no more sort of, you know, you know, get up, be strict. Um, and I cover all this in much greater depth in my talk on sleep disturbance in long COVID. So that's the sleep section, the category um, discussed and advised, and and um, all those tips and tricks that I've that I've sort of outlined. And then on to now the third sort of section, and that is sort of as I've referred to earlier. It's quite difficult to actually know what to what heading to give it, but I give it the sort of the mind body balance. And what I mean by this, it's it's important to consider the mind-body link and to sort of tackle those worries or worries and anxieties and stresses that you might have. These all lead to the fight and flight response, the adrenaline, the excessive adrenaline response, the sympathetic nervous system, um, an overdrive of that system. We need to address this. And we can address it by considering mind-body techniques or strategies such as mindfulness. Mindfulness is everywhere these days. And it's um, a, a, a tried and tested, proven, effective way of bringing about calm. And you can use those sort of download those those apps onto your mobile such as headspace or calm there's a there's a head there's an app called calm um it's relatively cheap and that can actually help with mindfulness and there are many studies that show its benefit in stress and anxiety reduction basically mindfulness is all about focusing on the now the here and now as opposed to the past or the future. So, you know, they say that if you start focusing on the past, you, you, you get sort of down and your mood is disturbed, you can get depressed. If you focus on the future, you start worrying about the future, um, you can get anxiety. So no, 
focus on the now take it in now um and 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 that as i said mindfulness is backed up by lots of lots of research studies that that show its effectiveness on lots of um lots of parameters but also in researchers have have done mri so brain scan studies in patients who are doing mindfulness and compare them against people who are not doing mindfulness and they see changes in the brain in those patients and beneficial changes in the brain in those patients who are doing mindfulness particularly in the areas of the brain that deal with emotion and deal with short-term memory so the, the so-called limbic system so consider mindfulness it's not it's not all imagined it's backed up by lots of respectable published um evidence-based papers in respectable publications along with mindfulness or other other thinking other mind body practices then there's yoga and tai chi again like i said mind body the mind body connection again these practices are backed up by studies that show that they help with stress anxiety and blood pressure reduction they they also incorporate focus and breath control and coordination and they're also very good for general body conditioning as we know when you're sick and you prolonged sickness that leads to deconditioning so doing yoga tai chi again you can you can source this online can't you there are you know many many youtube posts on um yoga and tai chi uh to to, to follow and then finally finally as part of the whole long covid management we must apply the fatigue management structure uh, strategies strategies um of pacing and planning and prioritizing so pacing um the process of balancing active those activity um that is sort of physical mental emotional activity balancing those activities with rest pacing gives you an awareness of your limitations knowing your limitations knowing your baseline to work towards um and not beyond is so important so basically you should be knowing when what to do um and up to that level so you don't want to be doing too little okay because that equals deconditioning but you don't want to be doing too much so pacing knowing your limits you can plan how much energy you use most efficiently and most effectively pacing means no more like push on through it's stop that's enough time to rest and then you can restart so i cover this in much greater depth in my talk on long covid fatigue so there we are those are the um the three strategies or categories which um we should be thinking about um when we're sort of tackling um tackling the recovery from long covid in general the nutritional as well as the sort of the sleep and as well as the mind body categories and so that concludes the second part of my talk on skin problems and long covid following on from the first part earlier i hope you found them all helpful and like i said before check out the references and resources and links uh, to social media in the show notes below and as i mentioned at the start any advice diagnoses treatments that i mention should all only be considered after discussion with your own gp 
or qualified health professional. So in the meantime, I wish you well. I wish you well in your long COVID recovery. Cheerio.